Well guys, after months of speculation and rumors, we finally had the full reveal of the Pixel 9a, which brings some healthy updates to Google's affordable Pixel lineup. As was somewhat expected from what we've seen over the months, we got a completely refreshed design, some spec improvements with a larger battery and a better camera system, but as always with Pixel devices, the real story here is with the software as Google has brought a ton of their flagship AI features to the more affordable Pixel 9a. I know, trust me, it can be tough to keep track of all of them, so in this video, we're going to break down the most important software features that made their way to the newly released Pixel 9a. That way, you'll know exactly what to expect if you're thinking of grabbing one for yourself. And of course, if you appreciate Android content like this, consider subscribing to the 9 to 5 Google YouTube channel as we have a lot more Pixel content like this coming your way. Getting right into it, I'm mainly focusing on features that were newly introduced on the Pixel 9 series, but are still currently not available on any last gen Pixel devices. That means, at least for now, the Pixel 9a is the most affordable device from Google that can utilize all of these features. We'll start with photography first since that's an easy place to start where the Pixel 9a actually inherited quite a bit from the more higher end Pixel devices. One of these is a well-known feature called Add Me, originally introduced on the Pixel 9 series. This is an AI powered feature that lets you combine two photos allowing the photographer themselves to be included in a group shot. It works by first taking a typical group photo, leaving enough space in the frame where you can insert yourself later on. After that first photo is taken, the photographer can then hop into the scene where you'll take a second one. During that second shot, your Pixel device will provide visual cues to help you align the new individual correctly. After that second shot is taken, the Tensor G4 chip will stitch the images together using AI. The end result should be a natural looking image with everyone inside the frame. It's a nice little addition that makes the process of including the photographer in a group photo a lot easier for the average user. We also got the implementation of best take as well. To be clear, we have had this on the Pixel 8 series, so it's not necessarily too far exclusive by any means. That said, it's still great to see on the 9a. Best take, for those who don't know, uses AI to analyze a series of photos taken in quick succession. It then allows the user to swap out individual faces based on the best expression from each person across various shots. And for the last photography focus feature, it's not necessarily AI related, but we have macro photo and video for the first time ever on an A-series Pixel device. So in that department, there are a lot of welcome software additions for the Pixel 9a this time around. Moving on, we also got a lot of big features that are still exclusive to the Pixel 9 series almost seven months after launch that thankfully we can use on the Pixel 9a as well. One of my favorites is the first party Pixel weather app. It features a 10 day forecast, a clear and easy to read precipitation map, all bundled into a smooth material U pixel-like aesthetic. And while yes, the Pixel Weather app is available on older devices, the AI-powered weather summaries feature is still exclusive to the Pixel 9 series, at least for now. That said, there are a few more benefits to look out for since its original launch a few months back. There's now a pollen count card that appears at the bottom of the feed, giving a three to five day forecast for grass, tree, and weed pollen. A while back, Google added immersive weather vibrations that give haptic feedback for different weather occurrences like rain or snow, where the vibration feedback will actually match the density of weather precipitation. And there was some general UI cleanup, making it easier to view more locations and see a more extensive view of the 10 day forecast. Then there were a few image generation tools that were also brought over like Pixel Studio, for example, where you can create images with simple text prompts. Since its original launch on the Pixel 9, Pixel Studio has also received a ton of new additions like the ability to directly generate stickers that you can then use later in Gboard. They also added a new people generation feature that allows you to create images and stickers of humans, something that has been highly requested. Understandably so, you can't generate photorealistic images of children or celebrities, but otherwise it works as expected. In regards to the general UI, there is now a ton of new image generation styles to pick from to mix things up a bit, such as the stained glass, children's book, and minimalism styles, to name a few. And they also introduced new categories of generated images that update occasionally. That way, you have a wider variety of ideas to inspire you on whatever your next creation is. Reimagine with Magic Editor is another addition that's coming with the Pixel 9a as well. For those who don't know, this is an AI powered feature within Magic Editor that allows you to change the look of selected objects by inputting a prompt. So you can ask Magic Editor to change the material of a certain object, change the object entirely 
from one thing to another or change the look of an environment like turning snow into sand or adding stars to an empty sky, for example, there is just so much you can do with this. It's supposed to be a user-friendly way to get into AI image generation to some degree, and I'm glad to see it on the budget-friendly Pixel 9a. Personally, this isn't something I use a ton, but if you do actively use it on your Pixel 9 series, let me know how it's been treating you so far and if you found it useful. I am super curious to hear your thoughts. Interestingly enough though, there are actually two notable AI features that will not make its way to the Pixel 9a. One of those is a pretty big one with Pixel screenshots. For those who don't know, Pixel screenshots is a dedicated app that uses Gemini Nano to categorize, summarize, and make your screenshots searchable so you can easily find and reference them in the future. This feature we did see debut on the Pixel 9 series, but unfortunately it will not be available on the Pixel 9a. According to Google, the Pixel 9a runs an extra, extra small variant of Gemini Nano that does not continuously run in the background and apparently only accepts text input. Because of that lack of multimodality, the Pixel 9a cannot process images or audio. I bring up the lack of audio processing as well because it was revealed that the Pixel 9a will not be getting call notes too, which is supposed to record and transcribe your phone conversations. Another big hit to the Pixel 9a, and at least in my opinion, if you're looking for a Pixel device with all of the AI features, this is definitely not it. And I probably would advise against the Pixel 9a if you're someone that's looking for a future-proof device when it comes to AI anyway, as it's very possible they could omit more features as time goes on in those future feature drops, just something you should keep in mind. And that, my friends, are all the new major features brought over to the Pixel 9a. For the most part, it's a healthy amount of new additions that should be nice to have on Google's more budget-conscious smartphone. I will say, it is kind of crazy that all of these features are available on the Pixel 9a, but not last year's flagships like the Pixel 8 or the Pixel 8 Pro. Hopefully, this is an issue that Google addresses soon because I've seen a ton of comments lately bringing attention to that fact. And while it's nice that we have a budget device that can offer the latest from Google, I think there's a little more work to be done for the Pixel lineup as a whole. Either way, my friends, leave a comment and let me know your thoughts down below. Are you excited about what we know about the Pixel 9a so far? Do you plan on getting one for yourself? Please share your thoughts as I'm super curious to see how the Android community is feeling about this device so far. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Simply put, we greatly appreciate you guys, and please don't forget to grab the March wallpaper pack Interstellar in the community post. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.